Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be retrofitting a Bilstein B14 coilover kit with some custom springs to change the ride. Now the B14 kit uh, stock from Bilstein comes with a 400 pounds per inch front spring and a 565 pounds per inch rear spring and we're going to be changing that with this Swiss spring up front which is 285 pounds per inch and this Hyperco spring in the rear which is a thousand pounds per inch so we've got quite a difference here and we're going to be changing the spring frequency bias uh, quite a bit um, from Bilstein this kit comes with what is called pitch where the front ride frequency or bounce uh, is a lot higher than the rear and we're going to be switching that up so that the rear is higher than the front in order to achieve flat ride so Andy, you know, why, do you, why did you want to make this change on this kit? Uh, well, primarily my, most of my car's life is on the street, which, which with occasional track time. So the, the really pitchy nature of uh, the stock kit makes it really uncomfortable to drive every day. And also it's easily upset even at the track and on rough terrain. So it's just not a, it, it, to me, for my type of driving style and like driving conditions, it's just not a great combination for what I want. So. Going to this setup, I'm hoping will be more palatable for daily driving as well as perform just as well on the track. Cool. And I think it'll be really interesting to see too, since we're going down in spring rate so much in the front, what that over damped feeling will feel like. And on the other side, we're going to be uh, uh, under damped in the rear. So how that will change the ride. I, I know in my personal experience, when I tested a really high rear spring rate in order to change flat ride and was running under damp in the rear, the ride was actually pretty smooth, but obviously you could feel that the chassis wasn't quite settled as quickly as it would be if it was properly damped. Now, one thing I will mention is um, Andy is planning on having his dampers retuned by Fat Cat Motorsports um, so that they're optimized for these new spring rates. But of course, there's going to be some time where he's going to be running with just the stock B14 damping profile. So there are a couple of uh, modifications we're going to need to do to the front struts in order to get these 60 millimeter ID swift springs to uh, work. And uh, one of the first things is we're going to have to cut the dust boot. So since this dust boot was made for a larger uh, inner diameter spring, in order to fit inside of the 60 millimeter spring, we need to extend it and then kind of like bend it inwards a little bit, just like that, so it fits. And what that does is that creates an excess of the dust boot down below. So you'll go ahead and do that, find out where you need to cut it, and then you'll cut off, uh, you know, roughly an inch and a half to two inches off the bottom of the dust boot. So here is the Millway adapter um, that will let you run a 60 millimeter spring uh, with your top mount. <clears throat> so here's the uh, OE thrust bearing, and as you can see, this guy just simply sits right on there. And then this lip down here is what will secure your 60 millimeter spring. So if I take the swift spring, you can see it fits very nicely on there. And uh, this is what is going to let us run these springs on the B14 kit. And also since it sits on the uh, OE thrust bearing, it can still rotate. So you don't need anything like another thrust bearing or uh, uh, thrust sheets between the spring and this uh, metal perch. The next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to remove this upper plate um, from the damper body. Uh, and the reason why is it, to use the 60 millimeter adapter from Millway, well, it doesn't quite fit over that. Um, so we need to remove it so that this can freely move up and down uh, on the shaft. And the way you do that is support this end with a block of wood like this, and then take a hammer and just hammer this till it pops off. So here we have the damper body without that ring and our adapter can slide freely over. So here is our B14 front strut assembly with the swift 50 newtons per millimeter or 285 foot pound spring on it. And uh, you can see we've taken off that top plate so the dust boot doesn't really uh, hold on to that anymore. And um, it looks like it's a little bit loose but it's captured pretty firmly within the coils here. Um, and then uh, you'll notice that it doesn't quite go down all the way, but that'll be okay because when it's in the car and it's compressed, uh, then we should still have plenty of coverage. You can see here we have the uh, adapter for our 60 millimeter springs, and uh, we still have our adjustable perches. So let's go ahead and pop this into the car. Okay, so as you can see, the lower spring pad, as it stands, doesn't sit all the way quite flush down. I can still push down a little bit. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to trim a little bit off of this right edge here. 
Okay, so this is how I've ended up uh, cutting it. I cut a little bit off of uh, both sides, um, and now I'm just going to place it in. There we go. Seat's nice at the bottom. All right, so we've finished our conversion of the Bilstein B14 springs. Once again, we've gone to a 285 pound per inch uh, front rate and a 1,000 pounds per inch rear rate from the stock uh, 400 pounds per inch front and 565 pounds per inch rear. Now that we've you know driven our test road, taken it around a little bit, how do you think things have changed? Uh, well, things are definitely smoother. Um, everything is way more composed, like over textured roads. Uh, the car settles a lot faster. Um, it definitely does not bump steer as much anymore, which is like a huge improvement. And I noticed that road buzz is also a lot better, um, a lot, it's diminished rather, but yeah. So the front is more compliant, is able to grip the road better because we've gone to a little bit of a softer rate. So even though it's uh, over damped, um, mm -hmm. it still feels uh, overall an improvement, would you say? Yes, definitely an improvement in ride quality. I definitely feel the, the, un the under damp nature, like it's a little bit vague uh, at times. For the rear? Uh, yeah, for the rear. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall it's still very drivable on the street until I, get, I go with a, t with a tuned damper. Awesome. And yeah, just for a fun little uh, experience we had with the rear, there's this one nice sharp little bump and because the rear is now quite under damped, um, the rear end caught quite a bit of air going over that bump. Like we've gone over that bump before and said like, oh, it feels like the rear end kind of jumped. No, the rear end definitely did jump this time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely some counter steer involved, a little bit actually, so that was fun. How do you feel the ride changed uh, just in like its overall composure? Like did the chassis feel different in terms of, you know, one half feeling separated from the other half or did the car feel more or less like one mass after these changes? Uh, it definitely feels a lot more like one, the one, ma one piece, like, um, yeah, like one mass really. The, the rear follows the front a lot better around turns. Um, I'm not struggling to like with the with the rear kind of like lagging behind anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just overall the car pivots better. It just it moves a lot better even though the damp the dampers aren't aren't really tuned for it. Hmm. Awesome. So that's that. If you want to swap the springs on your B14 kit, you know you can follow the same route we've done. And uh, you know I think you can agree with me that a flat ride definitely makes a difference. Yep, definitely.